What is up guys? Welcome to my very first top 10 on the channel. I wanted to do a more laid back video and uh, it was a discussion amongst uh, myself and my friends from the NBA uh, that uh, we were just going over some of our favorite Pokemon. Uh, Dom was talking about his and his mascot and stuff and uh, Jose gave us a list of all o OU Pokemon which was kind of kind of weird but I guess it works. I guess if you're more of a competitive player you're gonna like more competitive Pokemon better. But I'm gonna be going over my top 10 Pokemon. A couple of recurring themes in this list. Uh, first thing is that there are four water types in here and there are also four flying types in here. So uh, a couple of typings that I really really like growing up and even now. I think those two are some of the best offensive and defensive typings across the entire game. Uh, definitely water and flying being great defensive typings. But uh, let's just hop right into the list. So my number 10, uh, I'll just uh, give you a little uh, background story a little bit. Uh, there's also another reoccurring theme and that's that there are two generations that come up a lot in this in this list. Uh, and the first one is going to be second gen and you're going to see uh, Lantern come up on your screen and Lantern This was actually a toss-up between Dugong and Lantern. I was going for number 10 and uh, Lantern took it uh, Because I remember in gen 2. I absolutely love this Pokemon One of the main reasons was because it had a very unique a unique typing in uh, Electric and water giving it only two weaknesses, which is very rare for that for that time uh, for that time frame and um just back in Gen 2. I love this thing. I love running into it. I love running into Chinchou. It was one of my favorite Pokemon. Uh, I just like the way it looks, uh, and I like the uh, the fact that it gets Volt Absorb and Water Absorb. Like, I'll, I'm going to be talking a little bit about their competitive standpoints as well, uh, what makes them good and stuff. Uh, Lantern, like, I actually envisioned before starting uh, recording this, like, if, if Lantern had ever gotten a Mega Evolution, it would have been so much better, and, like, give it a split evolution, like Mewtwo X and Y and uh, Charizard X and Y and um, just give it a lantern X and Y and uh, basically give it levitate and sap zipper uh, get rid of its two only weaknesses and that would make it like so so competitively viable um, and it would probably even move up to, to UU because its stats aren't terrible I mean like its HP stat is through the roof at 125 you boost its defenses a little bit give it a little bit more special attack and speed and this thing can actually become very threatening so uh, it's a really cool Pokemon I just love its design it's still it's so nostalgic for me because I remember uh, when I was in grade 10 or grade 11 uh, one of my friends asked me what my favorite Pokemon were and at the time I didn't even start playing fourth gen yet um, like it had been out for a long time we were coming up to the end of black and white 2 uh, but I had stopped in gen 3 and I clearly remembered that lantern was definitely one of my favorite Pokemon so I absolutely had to include it on this list so this is the first Pokemon that we have here the next one is uh, yet another water water type as I said before and uh, it's the fourth gen water starter Empoleon now Empoleon is near and dear to my heart for a lot of different reasons uh, the first being that when I was playing the TCG uh, consistently, and I, I played it for uh, for a couple of months, uh, my main deck that I was using, this was about two years ago or two and a half years ago, was the Empoleon Acelgore deck. If you don't know that deck, definitely go watch replays of it because the way it functions is really, really cool. Uh, and I always love draw power in, in any kind of TCG, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon. Uh, and Empoleon gave you that draw power, and it was just, uh, it was a great uh, draw support. Pokemon and it was also a great heavy hitter uh, because of the fact that it hit for every Pokemon on the bench and active uh, 10 times that so it could hit for up to 120 every turn for one water energy was which was absurd uh, so it's a really cool Pokemon uh, I absolutely loved using it and uh, also it was my first starter in Gen 4 uh, if you guys don't know uh, like I said before I stopped in Gen 3 when I was in the seventh grade and I only started uh, back up with Pokemon once I was in college and I started by uh, purchasing a copy of Platinum online I had a, I had a DS with me uh, like an, an old DS not a 3DS I purchased Platinum and I played through the entire game and I absolutely loved it and then I went out and bought Pokemon Black Black and White 2 were already out and I made a huge mistake not getting Black 2 but I'm glad I found out the storyline of Black first uh, that was definitely a good thing but uh, getting back to Empoleon um, Empoleon was my uh, my fourth gen starter was the Pokemon that I picked was Piplup uh, and Empoleon's typing is just crazy, just water and steel. We need more of those because it's really good. It's only weak to, what, uh, three typings? Electric, fighting, and ground, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that's really cool. It, it's neutral to fire. It's neutral to, uh, what was it, grass. So it loses a couple of its weaknesses uh, from the water typing and pretty much mainly conserves those from the... Uh, 
from the steel typing. So, Polion is just a great defensive wall. It's a rock setter in competitive. Uh, it gets the ability Torrent, just like every other water starter, as well as Defiant, which is really cool, uh, because there are some physical sets that you can run with this thing, like with Aqua Jet. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool Pokemon. I just absolutely love it. Its st stat distribution is near to perfect uh, for me for a defensive Pokemon. Uh, the only downside to it is that it doesn't get any kind of reliable recovery, but if it did, it would probably be way too broken uh, because 84 HP, 88 defense, and 101 special defense make it really hard to take down. Give it a move like recover, and then it's just nearly impossible. Uh, the fact that it can run berries for its weaknesses, especially in UU, it normally runs Shooka Berry uh, to neutralize ground types and be able to knock them out with either Scald or Ice Beam. Uh, it's just a great move pool in general. The fact that it gets Grass Knot, uh, like I said before, uh, it gets Aqua Jet, it gets an Agility set actually, which is very popular in 4th gen or 5th gen, I can't remember which one exactly, uh, but like a sub Pattaya set, that was really, really popular back then. Uh, it's just a really cool Pokemon, I, I love Empoleon, uh, the, uh, the Steel Bird, Steel Water Bird, but uh, moving on to the next Pokemon, yet another Gen 4 right here. We have uh, our first bat on the list, actually, uh, and that's Gliscor. And the reason Gliscor uh, is so... It, it's Most of this is nostalgia, actually, guys. The reason Gliscor is uh, so uh, near to me is because uh, when I was building my first ever competitive team, which was right after I finished my playthrough of uh, Pokemon Black, um, I wanted to make a sand team because uh, X and Y wasn't out yet and sand was super popular and Gliscor was one of the Pokemon that I wanted on there because of the ability Sand Veil before I knew that the Toxic Orb set was better and Gliscor was just so good I, I'm like I love I love this thing's defense 125 it's just physically it's so hard to break through without an ice move uh, even water moves don't dent it too hard unless they're coming off of like very powerful water uh, water physical attackers like stab uh, physical water moves uh, gets access to two really cool ab abilities in sand veil and poison heal poison heal being absolutely obnoxious i've learned to hate gliscor competitively uh, when facing it but i love using it like one of my very first uh competitive gen 6 teams had a gliscor on it it was toxic heal uh the sub toxic set so that was uh that was so, so stupid for people to deal with uh and i'll go over my very first xy team uh, at some point, one one day, I'll I'll bring up all the members and I'll show you guys exactly what was the first, very first team that I used on the ladder, uh, and it was it actually performed pretty well. It like got me into the 1400s really quickly, and this was the first time I had ever played competitive. But uh, Gliscor is just a great Pokemon. It gets a, a set called the Acrobat set, uh, which is. Um, I believe it was Flying Gem with Acrobatics at the time, uh, and that would boost the power of Acrobatics plus get rid of the item at the same time. So the first Acro that you would go for would be insanely powerful. Also gets access to Agility, Swords Dance, which is really cool, Baton Pass. Uh, it's one of the few Pokemon that get uh, they get that kind of setup plus Baton Pass, so that's really cool. Uh, its special move pool isn't that great, but it gets access to Ice Fang. That was really cool for hitting other Gliscors back then. Uh, for hitting anything that was quad weak to ice like Garchomp or Salamence, uh, very big Pokemon in the in Gen 5, uh, and even now those Pokemon are extremely powerful. So uh, it gets access to Rock Polish too. That's when it gets ag agility and Rock Polish. That's that's cool. Uh, I'm just looking through its move set right here. Of course the to uh, the Toxic set which we went over, but uh, Gliscor is just an awesome Pokemon. I love it. I loved its design the first time I saw it. I was like, wow, this thing looks really cool. I had no idea that it was it was even Gligar's evolution. Uh, and then when I found that out, I was like, what? They gave an evolution to a Gen 2 Mon? That was before I found out that uh, Gen 4 was like the evolution gen, where everything pretty much evolved. And that'll actually bring us into our next Pokemon, because number, what are we at here? 10, 9, 8, 7 on the list uh, is Togekiss. Uh, if you guys don't know, I drafted Togekiss for our UPA uh, offseason league. Uh, that should be coming out before this video, actually. So if you haven't watched that yet, definitely go check it out. We got a pretty killer team. But Togekiss was my central focus. Focus. And the reason that this thing is so important to me, once again, nostalgia, is because when I played through 4th uh, gen, through Platinum, I had a, uh, a Togekiss. I caught a Togepi, evolved it into a Togetic, and eventually got it into a Togekiss, because I believe it evolves by friendship, if I'm not mistaken. That or a Dawnstone, and I, I, I did one of the two. Uh, and I evolved it, and uh, at first, I didn't really like it. I didn't found, find it super powerful. But after time, as its moveset started to come in and as, as, it, as it leveled up, I found that it was a really, really good Pokemon. Uh, I had the ability um, Serene Grace on it, actually, uh, which was really lucky because it could have ended up with Hustle. But I had Serene Grace, and uh, Togekiss was 
was so good for me and it did so much work in the elite four like part of my team was uh mamoswine and and togekiss those two were absolutely mon were absolute monsters and they still are to this day and what's even funnier is that i got to the final battle against cynthia and I go through her entire team and the last Pokemon she sends out is a Togekiss and I was like no way she's got one of these two and like I saw the rest of her team and I'm like she's got a powerful team man and the last Pokemon she brings out is Togekiss and I'm like I just fell in love with this Pokemon through the Elite Four through using it and uh, pretty much beating everybody uh, with Togekiss through the entire Elite Four and my final Pokemon to take down like how is that not storybook ending uh, they, I have to take down a Togekiss on the opponent's side and uh, I ended up winning. I think I beat it with Mamoswine and I just won the game right there. And that was really cool. So uh, if you don't know Togekiss's ability, Serene Grace is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, access to Air Slash, moves like Flamethrower that go up to a 20% burn chance. Uh, I pretty much talked about this in the... Um in the UPA offseason draft review video, but like access to Aura Sphere to hit Steel types, uh, the ones that Flamethrower can't hit, like Heatran or whatever, uh, gets extra sensory, gets so much good coverage. Uh, you can run it so many different ways, physically defensive, specially defensive because of its uh, its spread. Uh, you can run it as a Scar variant. Uh, you can even run it as a Choice Specs variant. Nasty plot, uh, yeah, nasty plot. Sorry, uh, Life Orb. You can run Roost, Defog. It's a great Defogger, which is amazing. Uh, just like Gliscor, actually. Gliscor can defog. So can Empoleon. We've had uh, three defoggers in a row. The next two are actually also defoggers. So uh, for, uh, apparently I'm in love with the move defog. Uh, but yeah, Togekiss is just like so close uh, once again to my heart because of that uh, that moment in Gen 4. When I played through Platinum and got to the end and the last Pokemon that I had to take down was, was a Togekiss. That was so funny. And yeah, that's, I'll, n I'll never forget that moment as long as I play Pokemon. So... Uh, that'll wrap it up for number seven. Let's move on to number six. Like I said, our next two are Defoggers. And number six is Skarmory, uh, second Steel type on the list. Skarmory was uh, such a rare Pokemon to find in Gold and Silver. Like when I first played through it when I was a kid, uh, Gen 2. Uh, you can only find, find it in the very last route of Johto, uh, right below uh, Blackthorn City. And uh, Skarmory had like such a unique typing. It was one of the only Steel types in the game because that's the generation that Steel was introduced. We had Magneton, Scizor, uh, Steelix, and Skarmory, I believe, were the only ones. And I found a Skarmory and I was like, what is this thing? It's so cool. And then I saw its defense stat and I was like, what? This thing is insane. And even to this day, like it, Skarmory has just proven its place as one of the best defensive walls uh, across the game because of its uh, its amazing typing for one. Steel and flying allow it to only have two weaknesses being electric and fire. Uh, don't quote me on that. I might be missing one. No, no, no. Those are its only weaknesses. Electric and fire. Uh, neutralizes the um, the fighting uh, weakness because of the flying type. Uh, it neutralizes the ground weakness as well because of the flying type. So it's it's got a really great typing, and its defenses are near near to perfect. If it had like ten more special defense, it would be nearly impossible to break through. Uh, and it's just one of the best spike stackers in the game. Uh, with uh, access to stealth rocks and spikes it also gets defog so it's a great defogger it's a very hard wall to break on the physical side if you run it fully physically defensive because it has 65 hp not great uh, but enough to back its 140 defense which if you give it a positive nature uh, goes all the way up to 416 so that's that's absurd at level 100 of course its ability sturdy uh, allowing it to um, to ignore uh, moves that would normally destroy it and oko it, uh, like very powerful special attacks uh, that are super effective, of course, that would knock you out. Like you can just sturdy, and it, this thing gets access to Whirlwind if you need to get rid of a Pokemon. Uh, Brave Bird and Iron Head as its stabs, which are not bad at all. It doesn't have a great attack stat at only 80, but that's that's still respectable. Um, then it gets, uh, like I said before, it gets Defog, it gets the Hazards, it gets Counter. Uh, it's just such a cool Pokemon. Roost, of course, to, to stall out your opponent. Taunt, uh, if you need to, to, to stall break. Uh, so, just, uh, Skarmory has, like, four move slot syndrome because it's so good. It has so much, uh, it has so much going for it. I just, I absolutely love it. And the big thing for me is that in Gen 2, like, it was so rare to find a Steel type. The only way you could get Steelix and, um, and Scizor was by, uh, evolving them with, uh, their pre-evolved forms, of course, with the Metal Code, I believe. 
uh, and Skarmory and Magneton were the only like catchable steel types in the game and I found Skarmory and I was like wow this is so cool so uh, that's that's pretty much it for number six let's move on to number five like I said we have uh, five defoggers in a row and this is our second bat on the list everything from here on out is pretty much not hinted at at all uh, I haven't talked about it um, well maybe a little bit but very little uh, and our number five slot goes to Crobat and uh, Crobat was big for me because this is another Pokemon that was on my very first competitive uh, OU team. I used Crobat as a defogger and a great check to uh, to fighting types because I was very fighting weak on that team. I used it for, well maybe not because I did have something that could check fighting types extremely well. But I had Crobat there to resist poison because poison was huge at the time because of fairies. Like everybody wanted to run a poison type. Uh, I also had something that could hit her fairies hard. Um, being a uh, Crobat that had cross poison and Crobat is just one of those great defoggers that has very good resistances like it quad resists I think either two or three typings kind of like Heatran uh, because of its poison and flying type and I think it is the only Pokemon with that type I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure it's the only Pokemon with that type uh, like if I just look up poison right here uh, I'll look that up for you guys uh, poison types uh, let me look up poison and flying there's Golbat uh, and there's Crobat, and I think that's it. Yeah, it's the only poison and flying type, which gives it a crazy, crazy uh, amount of resistances to a lot of different things. It's it's a fairy check, it's a fighting check, it's uh, it's a grass check, it's a bug check. Like it checks so many different things. It's insane. Uh, and it's uh, it gets access to of course brave bird to cross poison to heat wave actually to be able to hit steel types uh, it does, It's ability inner focus and infiltrator like those are so good guys I ran an, inf an infiltrator crowbat and like people tried to set up subs on me And I would just like go straight through because XY just started a lot of new players coming in and that was awesome You could even run inner focus crowbat to, to counter Lopany leads they fake you out and you're not affected by the fake out and you just go for Brave Bird and knock them out cleanly on turn one. That's insane. Uh, access to U-Turn, which is an amazing move. Like when I started getting into competitive, U-Turn was like, I always clicked U-Turn. Like I just wanted initiative every single turn. I just wanted initiative and I would always click U-Turn with my Crobat. And um, no, I just, I just love it, man. It's uh, I think it's more of a competitive thing than a nostalgic thing because I didn't really like it in Gen 2. Uh, Koga had it and it was an okay Pokemon. I, did, I didn't really love it. But I really grew to love it in, in XY in Gen 6. Like this is uh, this was the big thing for me was was that I had it on my very first competitive team and it was really good. So that's uh, that's gonna wrap it up for number five. Won't go into uh, too much detail with Crobat because, like I said, it's more of a, a of a competitive thing. Now the next Pokemon is super cliche, guys. I know you guys are gonna hate me for this, and it's like one of the most loved Pokemon. Uh, across the game when it came out in gen 6 everybody's like oh my god this thing is so cool uh, but I thought the same thing when I saw it the first time I saw it I was like I'm getting this thing I am uh, this is gonna be my starter and you guys already know where I'm going with this and it's Greninja and this is the third water type on the list uh, it's not the last one uh, the number two is also a water type but Greninja to me uh, I hate that they banned this honestly I, I, I absolutely hate Smogon for, for banning Greninja because I know how good it is, guys. I know how ridiculous it is with the ability Protean. Like, when, when they gave it that ability and I saw what it did, I, I used this uh, on, once again, on my very first competitive team, both on Showdown and on uh, Wi-Fi. Like, this thing was on my team. I made a competitive Greninja right off the bat. Max speed, timid nature, uh, perfect IVs. I got, like, the best Greninja you could get. And I, I used it on Wi-Fi, like before I knew like how to gen and and all that stuff. But I used Greninja, and uh, oh my God, this thing's move pool like competitively. There's a reason this thing was sent to Ubers because Protean plus its its coverage with Dark Pulse, Extra Sensory, Hydro Pump, Scald, of course being its stabs, uh, Dark Pulse, and the Water type moves. Uh, but then it got access to Gunk Shot and Low Kick in in Oras. And that just made it broken like it could literally hit everything it had ice punch and, and ice beam uh, U-turn for momentum its speed uh, allowed it to outspeed the likes of Tornadus Tornadus saw almost no play at the beginning of X and Y because Greninja was around like you could just ice beam uh, a torn after rocks and knock it out because you would become an ice type it didn't matter if it was AV you would just straight knock it out like life orb or expert belted ice beam would destroy it and then it has access to priority in shadow sneak and water shuriken uh, and it got spikes which allowed it to turn into a ground type uh, to avoid being knocked out by an electric type like manectric anything like that Greninja was just 
Greninja is honestly, like, there's a reason it's in the top four. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why it's not number one, but, um, well, I won't go too into detail, but, like, Greninja is up here for a reason. It's just so, so good. It's ridiculous. It sucks that it's in Ubers because it does nothing in Ubers, and I hate them for that. But Greninja to me, and, like, shiny Greninja. I hope I put a shiny, a shiny Greninja in front of you guys, but when I saw that it was black, it's like, it's, you know, I had to go edgy, you know? But... Greninja is, is so cool looking and I loved it and I'm so glad that they made it like Ash's main Pokemon in Gen 6 uh, It's just it's awesome, man. There's nothing more to say. I just love this Pokemon. I loved playing through the game with it uh, I originally I had a torrent Greninja of course because Protean was a uh, hidden ability But this thing was just it, it was so fun to use and I miss it I miss it greatly and every time I get to use it in, in league format like I've replaced Rob for a couple of weeks in the NPL and I got to use Greninja for him and it was so fun uh, Who else did I use Greninja for? Uh, I think I, t I like tested for a match and I had to bring Gren Greninja and it was it, like I love building with this thing Oh and uh uh, Eric, uh, who were helping out in one of his leagues, uh, the IBL, if you don't know Eric, uh, Heavy Metal Pokemon, check him out, but he has a Greninja, and every chance I get to bring the Greninja, I, I will take it, like, obviously, if it has a bad matchup, I won't, uh, I won't tell him to bring it, uh, because it's Torrent, it's not Protean, but, um, like, every chance, and I, I tell him, dude, bring it, it's so good, this matchup, just because of its speed stat, man, base 122, like, Weavile, and some Megas, and, like, uh, Mega Manectric, yeah, Mega Manectric, Megalopony, there's some stuff that outspeeds it, but this thing hits such a ridiculous speed. It doesn't have the best special attack, but Protean makes up for that, like, it's so good, it's so good. I'm gonna stop talking about Greninja, because I know you guys are probably getting tired of it. So, we'll move on to number three, and, uh, Dom's gonna be happy about this one, because this is his mascot, and it's his favorite Pokemon, I believe. Um, I don't, I don't want to spoil or any, anything if he decides to make one of these videos, but, uh, Pokemon is Toxicroak, and there's a very, very specific reason that Toxicroak is my number three. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is that, uh, at the end of X and Y, I was also building a rain team at the same time as building a sand team with Gliscor. Uh, not the end of X and Y, sorry, the, the end of, uh, black and white. Um, or black and white too, rather, and I was building a rain team with Toxicroak, and I even built one in, uh, in X and Y, actually, before RS came out, I made a rain team with Toxicroak with, um, Dry Skin, because with Dry Skin and Black Sludge, you get back a ton of health every turn, and that, that's what really, uh, made me love Toxicroak, was that it had a fighting and poison typing, which was so cool to me, uh, and then it also got, uh, the ability Dry Skin, Poison Touch, and of course, uh, the fact that it uh, it functioned so well in the rain. And at the time, I, I wasn't I wasn't too into competitive, and I didn't know a lot about it. And I was reading up uh, about Toxicroak more more so from Gen 5, not from Gen 6. And I found out that it was like a great Pokemon in OU because of its uh, its rain sweeping capabilities with a Swords Dance up. The fact that it could heal up damage every turn pretty much for free, you would get 18% back. It's absolutely destructive, and I love this thing. Uh, competitively, it doesn't do too much anymore. Like you don't even see it too much in the UU tier because there are a lot of Pokemon that check it very well, uh, such as uh, Fortress and. Uh, you have um, Mega Swampert or even re regular Swampert. I don't know how I just said Mega Swampert there. <laughs> Sorry about that, but there are a lot of Pokemon that, that check Toxicroak very well, unfortunately, because it's uh, of its lackluster speed. Base 85 is not the best. It's kind of a benchmark in um, in UU. Like uh, Lucario hits uh, base 85, I believe. It hits no, it it hits higher than that. Uh, but Heracross hits uh, base 85. It goes to 295 speed. Like 295 is is very much like a common. Uh, mid-range speed in UU, uh, but it's very underwhelming elsewhere, and there are a lot of, like, Toxicroak has a lot of weaknesses that are very exploitable, uh, it's quad weak to psychic, it's weak to flying, uh, it's weak to, uh, ground, it's, it's, it's pretty bad, unfortunately, it doesn't have the best typing, but I still love Toxicroak, and the specific reason that I was talking about before, guys, was that Krogunk was the very, very first shiny that I ever hatched, and I was, like, like at the beginning of X and Y, I was super into, like, when I finished the game, I was super into breeding my own Pokemon, and I made a perfect Krogunk shiny, and I was livid, like, my friend, uh, not Questy, he's been on the channel before, Jake, he'll tell you that when I hatched, it took me something like 800 eggs 
And when I hatched that shiny Krogunk and it was perfect IV'd, I was, I was so happy. Guys, I was just like, yes, because I love shiny Toxicroak. And that's another one that I hope I put up on the screen and not just regular Toxicroak. Because shiny Toxicroak looks so cool, man. That light blue plus that pink. It's just, it's perfect. But yeah, that's, uh, that covers it for Toxicroak. Now we're about to get into the very last water Pokemon here. If you haven't noticed, 2nd and 4th gen pretty much took up almost all of this list. And it doesn't stop here, guys. Because our next Pokemon here is Suicune. And let me give you a little backstory on Suicune. When I was a kid and I played through uh, Gold and Silver, um, I liked the, the roaming legendaries, like the dogs. Uh, Raikou, I found Raikou randomly one day and I was like freaking out. I was like, what? What, does, what is this thing? And this, I, it's a Raikou and I found it in, in the grass just to the uh, to the right of Mahogany Town where there's that little patch of grass in the middle of the water. That's where I found Raikou. And uh, when I finally played through Crystal, because a Gen 2 for me was huge, I had literally everything. Uh, I had all three versions, being Gold, Silver, and Crystal. They were all gifted to me for my birthday and for... Uh, for Christmas because I wanted them all. I had the uh, the walkthrough and the handbook. I had everything from Gen 2, guys. Uh, and I was so happy when I got my first Gen 2 game. I got it like a couple of days after it came out. Uh, well, I think it was like a month and a half actually after it came out. Uh, I'm not sure when it was released, but I got it for Christmas that year. And immediately I turned on the game. Like I, I had just finished playing through uh, Pokemon Blue and stuff. Like it had only been a year or so. And they released uh, Gold or Silver. I think Silver was the one I got first because I remember Silver being one of my number one games uh, of all time. Uh, when it comes to video games in general. And I opened Silver immediately. It was Christmas Eve. Uh, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, so it was already Christmas Day, and I opened uh, Gold, uh, sorry, Silver, and I just started playing through it, and I, I think I got to um, to Faulkner, and I stopped there, and I played through the rest on the next day. But anyway, getting back to Suicune, uh, I only really discovered Suicune when um, I played through Crystal, because it was like the main focal point of the game. It was you seen chasing around uh, Suicune all over the region, and you would run into it, uh, and that's basically all I really knew about Suicune, uh, until I started playing Pokemon again and when I started playing X and Y I didn't immediately go to UU I played OU and I saw Suicune sometimes but I never really knew what it did and it, it didn't really ever do anything to me it would roar sometimes it would scald sometimes I was like okay whatever and it's only when I actually used Suicune for the very first time I made a team I don't know if you guys remember if you keep up with the GBA at some point uh, they did a uh, like an interseason tournament where you had to draft uh, a Pokemon from each one of their tiers, make a team with it. I think it was after uh, season four, right after uh, Miguel won. Uh, and I made a team that consisted of um, a couple of Pokemon. I can't remember all of them right now, but I clearly remember that Suicune and Hariyama were on it. And I ran through the ladder with the combination of Hariyama and Suicune. And it was it was destructive. I it was the first time I was ever using Suicune, and I was using that team. I didn't participate in the tournament, but I was I still wanted to try to see how I would do with a team like that on the OU ladder, and I used it. And it's the first time I, I was using Crocoon, and every time I would set up, I would win. And it w I was like, why is this thing so indestructible? Like you get up a couple of Calm Mines, and it's impossible to beat. It's literally. You, you cannot break this wall because the only things that hit it super effective are grass types and electric types, and most of those moves are special. So with a plus two Suicune, you can take any single hit and then just keep on setting up. As long as you don't get crit, you're pretty much good to go. Suicune is, is my number two because of how good competitively it is. It's kind of like Greninja. Um, I'm a very competitive player, as you guys know from my channel, and when I discovered how good of a Pokemon that Suicune was, I instantly fell in love with it, and I was like, okay, this is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I love this thing. It's so good. It's ridiculously good. And then I started watching Pokemon MD a little bit more. Uh, I only started watching Joey uh, after the first, like, when the first season of the UCL was announced. Uh, I had watched him before that, but I didn't really like his content at the time. And then I got back into it when the uh, first season of the UCL started up. And I was... I saw like some of his Gen 4 games and him using Suicune in Gen 4 and even Gen 5 and some of his UU playthroughs and he would set up Crocoon and I was like, 
I can see why this is Joey's favorite Pokemon because this thing is so so powerful I love it base 100 HP base 115 defenses defense and special defense and then a 90 special attack and 85 speed like what why is this thing UU it's so good not enough people use it in UU honestly because it is ridiculously good you need a Suicune check on your team because Suicune is ridiculous and I always loved Suicune's design that was a big thing for me like I, I like out of Entei and Raikou and and Suicune I liked Suicune the best I found it looked the best with the with the purple hair and even it, it's shiny form like I'm not gonna put it up I'm gonna put its regular for, uh, form in front of you but it's shiny form is just so nice with the dark blue hair uh, it, its body pretty much stays relatively the same but the crystal on its head uh, and the um, the hair changes uh, and it's, it looks so nice. It just looks so nice uh, in shiny. And I, ju I just love Suicune all around. Design, competitively, uh, the lore around it, everything. Like, just it's second gen lore to me is huge. And that actually brings us into our number one. Uh, before I get into this, um, I'd just like to, to ask you guys, if you if you enjoyed something like this, uh, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you have not done so already, if you like content like this, if you like my competitive content, leave a comment down below for me, let me know what other top 10s you want to see on the channel, I would love to hear, uh, but we're getting into the last portion here, and like I said before, Gen 4 and Gen 2 especially, for me, are the biggest generations in terms of like Pokemon designs and the Pokemon that I love. And if you have not followed my channel for very long, you may not know this, but you should have noticed a very common trend if you've been here for a while. Uh, with my showdown background, with my avatar, there's a Pokemon that shows up a lot. I don't use it a lot competitively, but it's my favorite Pokemon for, uh, once again, a very specific reason. And that Pokemon is Celebi. Now, why do I like Celebi? I have all these flying types, I have all these water types, why is one random grass type my favorite Pokemon? Well, let me, let me elaborate. The first thing I want to talk about is its typing. Because grass and psychic is a really cool typing. It's, it's quite a weak uh, to bug and it's weak to a lot of different things. But it also covers a lot of, like if it has the right coverage options, it covers a lot of different typings competitively. Now, Celebi is not amazing. Uh, it was not amazing in OU. When it dropped down to UU, it got a lot of play initially, but now it's kind of leveled out, and it's it's kind of found a niche. It, it's a good Pokemon uh, defensively. It's good for setting up rocks. It's good for sp uh, spreading status. It's even good for setting up and passing. Uh, it's, it's a really cool Pokemon in that regard. Uh, but what makes Celebi so important to me is growing up as a kid, and playing through Gen 2, there was always this one elusive Pokemon, and for everybody else it was Gen 1 and Mew, but for me it was Gen 2 and Celebi. I spent countless hours trying to figure out how to get Celebi, and like when I found out that you had to complete the decks and go to the shrine uh, in the Elix Forest, and that's how you got it, like I spent a lot of time trying to complete the decks. I think I got up to like 218 Pokemon, and for the life of me, I, I just couldn't get the rest into my decks. And I wanted Celebi so so badly because it was just like it was this elusive Pokemon that I couldn't get. And uh, when they released Celebi, was it for the release? Of X and Y or Aorus. I think it was Aorus, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. They gave away, I believe, a Torchic initially, but then they also gave away a Celebi. I think it might have been X and Y actually. Uh, and they gave away a Celebi, and I had just started playing competitive, and I, I got uh, X and Y when it came out. Or it might have been Aorus, I'm not sure. Don't quote, don't quote me on this, guys. But they gave away a Celebi. They did, they did an event for Celebi, and I was like, what? They're giving away Celebi? I'm getting it immediately. <laughs> like, I jumped on Wi-Fi, I went to Mystery Gift, and I got my Celebi, and I was so happy that I had a Celebi. You guys had no idea, and it was a legit Celebi, and I couldn't have been happier. And I was, I'm like a 21-year-old, or a 20-year-old getting Celebi, and I'm like ecstatic. I'm like, yes, I finally got my favorite Pokemon. It's in my game, it's in my Pokedex. And it was so, it was such a, a great moment for me. Um, I'm, I won't touch too much on Celebi competitively, but there's one last thing uh, about Celebi that makes it my favorite Pokemon, and that's the species of Pokemon that it is. It's a time traveler. It can go through time, and that's always been kind of like, I'm a very philosophical person. Uh, I don't talk too much about it on the channel, but I'm very philosophical, and I'm always like, 
imagining things in my head and and thinking about like if we could time travel how it how would it work and what are the physics behind it and um I'm not too scientific on like the physics spectrum or, or like chemistry or anything like that, but I'm, I'm more toward the, the philosophical side and just like the implications of time traveling and to think that there's like a, a character in a game that I like so much and that it's the time traveling Pokemon and it can go through time. And I don't know if you guys have ever read the manga, but Celebi is so clutch in the manga. Like it's so, so important. Uh, its role what it does and I was like I was so happy when I read through the manga I went I went up until about the end of third gen in the manga I should have kept going because it, honestly guys if you've watched the anime don't watch the anime read the manga it's like a thousand times better like you got you have to read the Pokemon manga manga at some time in your life because it's really cool and Celebi had a pivotal role in the manga uh, and it's uh, it, it's just like it's it's followed me like th literally through time like all throughout uh, my life, Celebi has always been my number one and my favorite Pokemon, and it will it will always be the mascot for this channel. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. That's my top ten list. Uh, those are my top ten Pokemon. Uh, if you agree or disagree with me, it doesn't really matter because it's opinion based. But I would like to hear your top ten in the comment section down below. If you're a YouTuber and you've done a video like this before, link it. Link it for me in the in the comment sections. Uh, in the comment section, excuse me. I'll go and check it out. I'll give it a like. I'll leave a comment on there. Uh, I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like whatever it's fine But uh, like I said before guys leave a like for me down below uh, Make sure to subscribe and let me know if you want to see more uh, Videos like this in general just top tens or if you want to hear like uh, Stories from my past and in, in Pokemon and how it's affected me and what it's done for me in my life uh, I know I mentioned a little bit about that in the giveaway I won't get too far into details, but like certain Pokemon youtubers have have like uh, really helped me out and really uh, lightened my mood <laughs> about life and everything so um, if you want if you guys want to see more videos like this let me know just just let me know just leave a comment down below and I'll check it out and uh, that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching I really appreciate everything you guys do for me I'm so glad you're all here and I'm so glad you're at this part of the video and uh, yeah that's it guys ciao